Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be continuing our weld design series by looking at wide flange welds. Um, and typically when we're talking about a wide flange weld, we're talking about a, a wide flange column um, welded to a base plate. So that's what we'll be looking at today. So we'll be utilizing ASC specification chapter J for our weld capacities. Um, we'll be utilizing the Blodgett method, uh, which basically treats the welds as a line with no throat, and we get sort of a, a per unit length uh, demand and capacity, and we compare those, and then we determine based on that uh, what the thickness of the of the weld needs to be. And uh, for the wide flange welded to a base plate or welded to a plate, uh, we are going to be able to evaluate five degrees of freedom. So we have FX, FY um, in plane. We have FZ right coming in and out of the page. And then we have moments about each of those uh, axes. So let's take a look at our problem statement today, right? We're going to be looking at a base plate well, right? Pretty typical. So we have a, a W14 by 68 column welded to a base plate. Uh, we have some parameters there for the W14, the depth, uh, flange width, flange thickness, and web thickness. We are going to start with an assumption of a quarter inch fillet weld all around um, using E70 electrodes. And our loading for this, um, right, we've already calculated this, we've already done our analysis model, so we have um, our sort of ultimate um, already, you know, combined uh, loads or already run through our load combinations. So we have an axial force, a compression of 15 kips that's going in and out of the page. We have a shear force, um, right, in the direction for what would be like a moment frame or something like that. Uh, of uh, 12.5 kips and then our moment about that axis as well for uh, you know if this is our moment connection uh, would be 125 kip foot so we are going to be checking to see if that quarter inch fill weld is sufficient to resist the loading and if not we'll adjust as needed to make the design work so let's go ahead and open up calcbook and we'll get started on the design all right, we've got CalCalc open now. So we go ahead and click into our steel design module. We can click the uh, 15th or the 16th. Uh, we'll go ahead and use 15th for this calculation. Um, click into our steel connection design. We'll toggle over to the welded connections and we'll slide down and select the weld design wide flange type two. We offer um, two different types of welds here for wide flanges. Um, we either offer a type one, which is just an outside weld on the flanges, and then a type two, which is basically just a, a, a fillet weld all the way around uh, around the, the wide flange. So go ahead and select type two. Uh, we're going to stick with the US customary units, and we'll get that loaded up. So now we can go ahead and start entering our inputs for this, right? So we have some geometric information we need to add here. So the width of the weld or the, the flange width is going to be 10 inches. The height of the weld or the the overall depth of the column would be 14 inches um, our flange thickness uh, would be let's see here 0 0.72 and our web thickness would be 0 0.415 and then we decided uh, that we we're going to leave these as quarter inch for now and see if that works for us we can always come back and adjust that if needed and then our uh, our, our strength of our weld uh, or the filler metal is 70 ksi so we'll leave that as is and then we can go ahead and update our demand. Um, right, we said we already uh, used an analysis model to get our reactions there at the base of the column. So we're going to go ahead and click none and assume that we already have our ultimate loads. Um, the force in the x direction, right, we don't have any because that's not the direction of our loading for this, uh, for the base of this column, which we kind of said was, was like a, a moment frame. Um, our force in the y direction, right, that we do have a load there of, um, let's see, 12.5 kips. The force in the z direction, we have uh, 15 kips, that's our axial load. And then we have a moment about the x-axis, right? That's our moment frame uh, reaction there at the base. And that is going to be, uh, let's see here, uh, 125 kip feet. Okay, um, so now we can see right at a quick glance, we're over by about 8% um, in the flange weld. So we will come back and take a look at that. Uh, but let's dig into the calculation here um, and kind of see where we're at. And then we can update the, the design as needed. So. Um, the first couple items are just going to be summaries of our applied loads, right? So just what we entered in the demand input. Um, but then really what we want to do is take a look at what the demands are um, on our flange weld and web weld utilize, utilizing the Blodgett method. And one thing to note here, um, there's a few ways to approach this type of weld design. And the way that CalcBook does it is that we take any moments about the X and we apply them directly to the flange on the outside. So the flanges resist all of the moment. 
and then the web uh, resists all of the direct shear. So we just separate those out into two different components, um, and then any axial force is resisted by the entire length of the weld, and those are all sort of combined up individually. So we'll take a look, that, a look at that as we get into it. But first, we look at the flange weld, right? We look at the required section properties um, of the entire system here. So we have the total length of our welds, the um, section modulus about the x-axis, and the section modulus about the y-axis. And then for the flange uh, weld, we look at the weld stress due to each load component, right? And for this, we only have two components we're looking at, right? We have uh, our FZ, right, which is going to be our um, out of plane, our axial force. So we have 0.23 kips per inch. And then we have our shear due to the moment, um, and that's going to be 5.76 kips per inch. Um, and so then we add that up, right? we get a total um, unit uh, sh shear per unit length or shear per inch of 5.99 kips per inch. And then we can go and check the same on the web weld, right? This is going to be due to the direct shear. So we have a component due to the direct shear, right? Our FY of 0.5 kips per inch, and then also the same um, uh, uh, shear per inch due to the uh, Z or the axial load. Um, so we can add those up again um, and get our total web weld uh, stress of 0.55 kips per inch. So once we do that, we can calculate the capacities of each weld, right? And for now, they're, they're the same, right? Because it's an all-around weld. Um, so we get 5.57 kips per inch. Um, and this is just uh, out of AISC Chapter J, pretty straightforward fillet weld calculation. Um, and it's the same for the web because it's the same size weld. So we are over by 8%, right? So let's just go back here and we'll just go to the next weld size up. We'll, so we'll go to a 5 16th. And we'll update both the flange and the web because we're using the same for uh, for the all-around fillet weld, and that gets us down to a 0 0.86 uh, DC ratio. So that works for us. So that is a uh, wide flange welded to a base plate in Calcbook. We hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have comments or suggestions on uh, other designs you want to see, please let us know in the comments below, and uh, we'll see you next time.